Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mythlog with your host Nitin Nair. Now one of the questions we've been asked regularly ever since we started the podcast comes from people who want to know when we would start featuring their own traditional culture and mythology and I just would like to assure everyone that we are getting around to multiple mythologies it's just that the whole idea behind the website is to bring in as many as possible and we are going about it step by step one of the cultures that has really excited us and we are looking forward at featuring a lot more is japanese mythology japanese mythology along with indian mythology are one of the very few that have a lot of importance even today this is primarily because the japanese religion of shintoism is still practiced in many parts of japan although the modern generation tends to be a little more dismissive of all these uh, traditions if you look at the various festivals that happen around japan you would see that there are a lot of religious festivals and celebrations that happen that derive their roots from shintoism and the gods and the pantheon that really commanded the respect and worship at a certain point of time in Japanese history. The Japanese mythology has its uh, influences from Buddhism, from China, from other Southeast Asian mythologies and even to a certain extent from India. This is mainly because over the years the trading routes between these regions had been open and was commonly known as a silk route which allowed a lot of intermingling and a lot of dilution of the original concept or the original religious practice the silk route actually allowed different cultures to interact with each other and has brought about a very healthy mix of taking stuff from other religions and other mythologies and making them a part of their own now one such common feature that you would find in multiple mythologies in southeast asia but is especially prominent in japanese mythology is of that of the komenu the komenu refer to the lion statues that are commonly found at the entrances of japanese or shinto temples these statues are often called lion dogs or sand komenu they can be found in both the outer and inner portions of shinto shrines the first type which is born in the edo period is known as sando komino and the second and much older type is called the Jinnai Komin. They can be also be found at private homes, Buddhist shrines, and places associated with nobility. Modern Komenu statues are almost identical except for the mouths. In most cases, they have the same shape, though exceptions exist. The two forms are called Agyo and Ungyo. The name Komenu translates to Chinese guardian lions. They have been believed to be inspired by the image of Asiatic lions that were brought to China from India and the Middle East, and especially from the symbolism associated with Emperor Ashoka of India. Those familiar with Indian history know for a fact that the Emperor Ashoka, who had a symbol of four lions facing four different directions, each symbolizing a different character trait, and also the fact that they were looking in four different directions as guardians of the empire the symbol is now commonly used in modern day india as well part of the currency notes part of the judicial system and is one of the most prominent symbolisms associated with modern india this symbol of strength became a prominent feature of the animal after its transportation along the silk road from gujarat where the asiatic lions call their home as well as from parts of the Middle East where once again it was brought in from Africa. There are many types of Komenu such as those with coins in their mouth or in their paws. In other places they have bibs around them like the statues of Jinso and Nagasaki. Komenu are often seen in pairs. I mean, it's very rare to find a Komenu that is not in pairs and it has been said that one is male and the other is female. They are also known to be depicted in one very distinct pattern. One of the Komenu always has its mouth open while the other always has it closed. 
In the Heian period, these were called Komenu and the hornless ones were called Shishi lions. Though nowadays both are referred to as Komenu and have a distinct style that has been associated with all these statues. At times, it has to be noted that these statues tend to be reflective of the different areas of Japan from where they are created and have a distinct pattern that can be traced back to ancient families who were sculptures and who decided to build these communes in styles that became associated with their families. If you look around Japan, almost every temple has a communu at its entrance and now in modern times this has been misappropriated by having the a symbol of uh, Southeast Asian culture with almost every other Chinese or Southeast Asian restaurant having a komenu in front of them. These lions, sometimes depicted in gold nowadays, were originally carved out of stone and were supposed to be menacing like a lion guarding your home instead of a dog. That is where the association of a lion dog came into existence as well. During the Nara period, which is similar to the rest of Asia, two lions always accompanied each other. These pairs were only used indoors until the 14th century. Uh, during the Heian period, like I mentioned, the two statues were different and the former was called Shishi because it had an open mouth, while the latter was referred to as Komenu or the Goguryo dog. Probably the most common form of Komenu that appears nowadays are the stone ones that are guarding the approach ways of shrines. Many people believe that worshipping the uh, Kumenu is a sign uh, to get more strength, both mental as well as physical, while some associate them with bravery, loyalty, or to the person whose property they guard. There are differences in styles in the type of Kumenu found at major shrines and rural areas, as well as the artists who create these works. There are many styles that refer to regions in Japan, some of which are very distinctive, and some which are beginning to disappear sadly. One particular style that is becoming less popular is the Izumo style, where the lions are not sitting but depicted as crouching with their rear end up in the air. The Okazaki style is considered to be the standardized style now and is common all over Japan. I personally find the Izumo style really relevant and really interesting because Lion, the lion is depicted more in a cat-like form because you would never find a lion who has his paws stretched out front and with his rear in the air. But this is a common sight that almost all cat owners from around the world say they see this in their cat when they're literally getting up from a point of rest where they are actually stretching themselves out. And this has a distinct look because it really brings about variety in terms of the Komenu statues. You have the Okazaki style, which is the traditional sitting Komenu, and some of them have coins under their feet, which can be also wrongly depicted as large discs or balls. Okazaki style is what is now you would see in modern times, especially if the statue has been created in the past 30 odd years. Similar structures are seen all across of Asia, especially in China, Korea, Indonesia, Cambodia, Thailand, and also in some parts of India, where you have ancient temples with a guard of a lion up in front. Now in Indian culture, the guard for the deity or the guardian for a particular temple can be a Rakshasa, it can be an animal, it can be Nandi if it is in the case of a Shiva temple, but the concept of a guardian animal that has additional powers and capabilities has been a constant across various Asian mythologies and culture. Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of Mythlok. This is your host Nitinaya signing off and reminding you that Mythlok is the home of mythology.